Hi, this is James Gardner, the Sydney Tech Geek, and today I'm at the Barco stand to talk to Saurabh about Oro, uh, the new sound system that's coming out. So, please tell us about like why is this interesting to a cinema owner and what's it going to do for them and what's the story here? Sure. Uh, thanks, James. It's good to meet you. Um, Oro 11.1 is uh, the new sound format by Barco. Uh, it uh, late 2010. Uh, Barco decided on an initiative to create something that we call the cinema of the future. Uh, we've done a great job uh, in the image side of things. Our projectors uh, have uh, been received really well in the market. We've done very well with uh, uh, improving the image quality of our product, making it sustainable, and bringing a really great experience to the, the moving going audience. And uh, we sat down and decided that how can we improve upon the experience? And as George Lucas says, uh, uh, has said in the past, uh, sound is 50% of the movie going experience. It was a logical progression for Barker to actually get into this side of things to improve upon or bring a different kind of an experience to the audience uh, that could keep bringing people back to the theater uh, and keep having them have a better experience. Um, we looked at existing technologies. The 5.1 uh, and 7.1 technologies that are currently in the theater systems have been uh, great technologies that have served the theater systems really well. And we looked at those technologies and said, how can we leverage what we have currently in the auditoriums and, and, and add something to it to bring a different experience? And based on certain uh, 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 the ideas that we had, we thought that increasing the sound field from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional layer increases the immersiveness tenfold. And it, it, it's a really impressive uh, addition. And uh, we, we, that's the basis of our technology. We create a three-dimensional sound field in a theater which is very close or really mirrors the natural acoustics that you find in the environment. Uh, now, now I, I went to your, there was a demo, yes. and I went to it, I, I was quite impressed that the, definitely the different height, right. heights of the audio above yes. and at an angle and then at the normal side level. Right. Uh, the, when I heard the, uh, the organ, for example, it was amazing, that was the, the highlight of mine, it really did sound like I was in, the organ was in the room. Right. Um, so that, that's fantastic, yeah. and, and it's definitely, uh, it's definitely something a cinema owner would, would most likely want to offer to their, their clientele because it's definitely an experience they're not going to get at home. Right. And it's something to bring them into the cinema. So it's a, it's a really good development. Right. But there is quite a lot of confusion I noticed uh, yeah. about all these new sound formats, right. the number of amplifiers I might need to buy, right. the costs involved with right. all the speakers. <laughs> it's a bit of a like, you know, it's... A bit, scar yeah, it's a bit right. scary right. to a degree. Right. Right. So, so um, what, what can you say about that? Yeah, it's a great question. And I, th I think uh, there is a little bit of a confusion in the market. But that's why you see a huge initiative by NATO, which is the North American Theater Owners Association, to actually start a conversation about standardizing some of these platforms for content production, to specifically to address uh, the, the you know lack of a better analogy a format war so that the exhibitor uh, has the power to make a decision on which playback mechanism they choose currently in the market we have uh, three immersive sound solutions uh, one by Barco which is Oro 11.1 uh, Dolby's Atmos and IO Sono uh, which is uh, Wayfields and says um, uh, sort of an immersive experience um, which uh, these three different sound formats can bring a little bit of confusion to the market. That's why there's a there is a push to go into uh, making an open standard for immersive audio, and Barco is fully aligned behind that. Now, from a commercial implementation standpoint, uh, we feel that the uh, Oro 11.1 uh, Barco solution is uh, really a, a very simplistic way of creating this three-dimensional audio. Uh, the reproduction in the uh, in the auditorium because we built on existing platforms. So now, you, if you if you consider an auditorium right now, you have a, a surround layer. In our technology, we just replicate this a 5.1 mechanism that you that theater owners are used to understand. They know how to wire. Uh, spe run speaker wires as well as wire amplifiers and they just need to do that one more layer above the existing layer. 
the number of uh, channels of amplification required are um, minimal because we maintain a channel-based approach to sound reproduction. So uh, you do have do a doubling of the speakers that you have in an auditorium, but the number of ch uh, you don't need an exponential number of channels of amplification because now we we maintain a channel-based approach versus an object-based approach. Yes, I must admit. Um Atmos and the other systems have approached this differently yeah. and one would say that uh, your channel based approach in terms of your layering and the Atmos which they, they basically want an amp per speaker and you can imagine uh, the wiring and the amplification requirements for that is quite uh, onerous and expensive so uh, I think that the, the Barco is a very good uh, middle ground giving you a very similar result right. but a very cost effective result right. um, and, and in my opinion it's probably where I would lean at the moment because of that but it's, it's still a little bit early days but yeah. I was very keen at your presentation you. to talk about yep. the standards and it was yep. made clear and I agree with the studios or some studio representative there made it clear that they wanted to go down the standards route yep. and um, they were encouraging, they thought the studios, that's where they would go and um, and I agree with them because the standards makes it more competitive, it makes it so other companies right. can actually compete on this level yep. and and the reason I've liked Barco a lot lately is because Barco is competing on quality yep. and you know and, and uh, innovation and that's why I've sort of liked Barco's movement lately. You've probably noticed I've been leaning towards them because they've been the most innovative in my mind with their new Cinecare technology. Um, they've got a post-production projector that's come out as well to, for, to help the post industry. These are products that other uh, the other companies haven't even looked at yet. So right. very innovative, in, 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 innovative, and I'm very impressed with that. So, yeah. um, but let's just quickly go. Um, so this is the sound process that you're currently doing Oro with. Yes, correct. So this is a Barco product. It is uh, the AP24 3D. It's a 24-channel audio processor uh, manufactured by Datasat. Um, it marries along with the Oro 11.1 decoder uh, and reproduces uh, uh, 24 channels of, of sound if you, if, you, if you need them. So one of the things at the show, I know you've got your 11.1 channel based audio yes. but uh, the uh, object based or this immersive based audio technology or standard, it, it will also be supported in this and in how long before that type of implementation is, is seen in your product range? Um, that's a hard question to answer, James. I think uh, based on how the industry moves, I think uh, there has uh, been a, a good discussion uh, this CinemaCon on uh, you know the open standards approach, uh, but I think simti has got their work cut out for them uh, to really sit down and um, figure out what the standard will look like, what kind of implementation mechanisms they need, what kind of uh, uh, distribution mechanisms uh, they will need and what kind of manufacturers need to be involved. I think uh, we will definitely need audio processors, audio processing companies to be involved. We would need uh, uh, server manufacturers to be involved. So it's, it's going to be a cohesive approach to solving uh, the, the open standards, uh, the, uh, uh, I wouldn't say a problem, but open standards question. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the, the, the time frame will be, uh, you know, uh, we'll, it's, it's to be determined. Uh, I hope it's soon. I think um, uh, our position, Barco's position on the open standard is we are fully behind the open standards approach. We feel that it, it, it helps everyone. Uh, it helps content production because it standardizes tool sets, it standardizes the way they produce co uh, content. It is um, value added for distribution. Now you don't have multiple immersive audio DCPs uh, that are being distributed in the market. So from that standpoint, you standardize. The, the biggest thing for us is that it gives the power to the exhibitor to actually choose yes, which um, playback technology aligns with their strategic goals. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. That's one of the big things that I like to do in my videos is to enforce choice yes. and, inf in, and inform decisions. And that's one of the reasons I do these videos. We talk about the technology, make sure you're informed so you can make the best decision for your cinema. Correct. That's great. And anyway, that's. I think that's enough for now. If anything, I wanted to add to this. I will keep following this, Absolutely. and then the, if the standard, when it develops and where it goes, I'll probably try and keep you up to date, and, and uh, to make sure that we're, you know, we follow this. This is a, a hot topic this year, and now that we're we're not. This is not now digital cinema. 
Digital cinema yeah. is cinema. Yeah. So the cinema industry is, you know, this is what we're doing now, and we're moving on to the next possible uh, development in the cinema. And now we've done the picture, and we're going to do the sound next. So this is a hot topic. So keep an eye on it. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. I appreciate your time. Thank you very yeah, much. Take care. This is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek. Bye for now.